I want to welcome you to Dream Chasers Radio as well as so many different other places. What's up, people? How you doing? It is a great day. and I'm so very excited to be here. Listen, okay? So everybody keeps asking me, how can you run a company? And most of all, how do you run a successful record label. Well, today we're going to be talking about that. We're going to be talking about that with Omar Ali. Welcome to the show. Thank you so much for joining us today. Respect. All is well. How you doing? I'm doing good. I'm doing good, Omar. So Omar, tell us about yourself. I really want people to understand where you're coming from and how your experience is going to set the precept for this interview today. Well, to to um, to put it simply, <laughs> to put it simply, I've been in this business literally um, 45 plus years um, since I was six years old. My mother, father and uncle are the members of the 70s funk group, the family tree. Um, my father made me a part of the group in 1976, um, traveling on the road with old school, old school legends such as Millie Jackson, Joe Tech. The floaters, Commodores, Earth, Wind, and Fire, the list, the list goes on and on. Um, and I often say, um, I don't know whether or not my father was um, cheap or if he was a mad genius because he made me a part of the group, um, introduced me to the business at such a young age, and the rest is, and the rest is history um, from that point. I started um, in, the, in the early 80s. I had my own my own singing group um, in Jacksonville, Florida, where I'm from. And uh, we had a lot of local local success and regional success. Um, also opening up for the New York Fresh Fest in its um, in its early stages. So we, we, were, we were always on the road for like for like three years straight with, you know, Houdini, Run DMC, Beastie Boys, LL. I mean, the list the list is crazy. Um, so I, I'm, 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 I was groomed and pretty much raised by legends in the business. I've promoted and performed with icons such as um, Public Enemy. I got my first record. I've got my first record deal when I was 16 with Foresight Records down in Fort Lauderdale. My second record deal with Polygram in 1989. Um, in, in 1992. In 1992, I had the fortune huh, of meeting and, and 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 going on tour for three months with my brother, my friend, my outlaw comrade, Mr. Mr. Tupac Shakur, um, and it was beautiful. And he I, he's actually the one who gave me my tag of the, the the Southern Outlaw. And if you look at my arm, if you can see it, he and I have the same outlaw outlaw tattoo. Um, and I'm, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm an original member of the outlaws before the outlaws were concepted. Um, so, I mean, it's been, it's been a beautiful ride. And recently I say 2014, I was, uh, I was managing my brother, Sirius Penny, um, and had the, uh, met the company of OG Mac drama on his radio show. And unbeknownst to me after the, after the interview, he was he was messaging me on on Twitter? I was messaging him because I wanted to transition from manager to A and R, and he was already looking at me to be an A and R. So I mean, it kind of fit, <laughs> and and I mean, and that's what it is. I became the A and R for the whole Southeast region of Ten Seventeen Brick Squad, um, and then a year later, I became president. But that was already in the plan between um, the, the the quote unquote higher powers. <laughs> You know, for me to be the president of the label and move it into a new direction, and here and here I am. I resigned in two thousand. I was president from two thousand fifteen to two thousand nineteen, going into twenty. Wow. And here I am. I just love it, and life is great. I hear you. I hear you. So, with all that experience, let's back up a little bit because a lot of people are, are confused as to what a record label is in this day and age. I mean, we all. I mean, a lot of us know about the older formats and the older business format and schedules of the older uh, way that it used to be with the record. Right. But th that, has, right. that has so changed. That is, that is not, it is not. I think it's flipped upside down. Yes, yes. So what, what, what do you say? First of all, let's define what it is now. 
in comparison to what it used to be then? Okay. Um, one of the biggest, one of the biggest things I see as far as the difference in quote unquote old school, new school practice um, of a record label is the the the, the implementing of the A and R. A and R simply means artist and repertoire. And what an A and R does is basically a scout goes out, finds talent, develops. Now, be careful with that word. Develops <laughs> talent um, for stage interviews, the public, every everything, um, and then works with that artist in what's called artist development. Now, the practice of artist development is a long and gone practice in record labels today, period, period. So artist development, like I, 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 give, I give a good example. With my uncles, with the, with the Temptations, right? That process was long. They have, they have vocal training, artist development. They had choreography, artist development. They had interviews, artist development. They had um, presentation, artist development. That was a part of the practice. When you then when you get when you're talking about getting into, into hip hop and rappers and this and the other, you have to deal with practice, practice, practice. You know, there's a saying, you know, people always say that practice makes perfect. I've never been a believer of that. I believe I believe that perfect practice makes perfect. Because anyone can practice, that doesn't mean that they're necessarily doing it right. So to me, perfect practice makes perfect. So, you know, if you're a hip hop art, if you're a hip hop artist back in the day, you know, when I first got my record deal with with Foresight, uh, Foresight Records and, and, and Fort, Lauderdale, Fort Lauderdale and Billy Hines, who was one of my, my one of my very first mentors. When we were in the studio, we worked on projection, how we sounded. We worked on and then we worked on, like I say, the whole interview process because interviews can be tricky. <laughs> you know, interviews can be tricky. Um, we worked on, okay, what are you going to wear for this show? What are you going to wear when you're out in public going to the grocery store? Because image is everything. Once you start making a name for yourself and people see you, they want to see the star image. If you saying you're if you saying you're a star, but you dress like peanut on the corner, it doesn't mean the same. And that mystique is gone. So you have to maintain your image. So to me, that's the biggest thing um, when it comes to the difference between old school record labels and new school record labels is artist development. These days, these days, record labels, they want they hear something that may sound a little good to them that they think they can that they think they can work. When I call work, I mean, you know, structure and manufacture for the people put out, get a hit. Get some money, throw the artists away. It's not about longevity today. And that's my biggest thing. Hmm. The artist development side of things. Wow. wow. So, I mean, okay, so let's 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 run with that real quick because I really want to know. You know, artist development to me is is essential. Like you said, it's you, you know, how do you dress? How do you how do you hide? If you are uh Cardi B, you know, Cardi B, I saw her in a video on Instagram. She had on a a do rag on her head, she had on just regular, I think, spandex and a t-shirt, and she went to coach to go buy something. She did not look like Cardi B, she just looked like like you know, like a regular person right. with, with a you right. know, so how do you camouflage yourself? How do you blend in and then how do you stick out? You know, these things are artist development. Um, and you're right. Where can people go today to learn this? I have an idea, but I'm not the expert. You are. And I don't want to say anything because I, 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 I've been wrong. <laughs> I've been wrong before. So where can people go to actually learn this now in this day and age? Because I think it's a lost art. What, what, what artist development? Oh, yeah. I'm saying, I'm saying, where where can they go to learn artist development? Yes, I mean now, now I know, I know, I know. Don't laugh at me. Don't don't do that because it is. I I don't. I I have an idea, but they're so broke. It's so broken. It's so broken. 
that I, uh, if, you, if you learn one bit, you got to search for the other. Hey, I understand. Looking for artist development is like looking for, like looking for the Loch Ness Monster. <laughs> I'm just saying. Is it, is it Bigfoot? <laughs> it's like, I mean, because, I mean, because there's very few people today that still believes in artist development. When you talk, and when you talk about artist development, you have to find someone that comes from the school of artist development. Someone that comes from that era. If you're talking about, listen, being, look, straight up. If you're talking about 95, 7, 8, going up, you, 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 you dead. You dead in the water. In order to find someone that truly knows artist development, you got to find someone. You got to find someone that's a uh, that's an OG, triple OG, that comes from the seventies, the eighties, early nineties. That hell, put like this right here. If you didn't get a dance move right in a dance group, or if your your outfit didn't look presentable to that A and R that was giving you that artist development. You didn't go on stage until you got that outfit right. Okay? Understand that. You didn't go on stage. You didn't perform. You didn't do this, that, and the other. Today, today, record labels just say, hey, we're going to make your song a hit. Go out there looking however you want to. And that's a no-no. That's a no-no. Uh, somebody, hey, somebody told me this, this, this. Well, I've been hearing this phrase for the last few months. You know, I'm old school. So I'm like, what the hell is that? Gaslighting. That's gaslighting. <laughs> hey, just letting them go out there do what they want to do. And whatever happens, happens. Come on, man. That's not, you know, record labels have to be responsible and accountable for their artists. It's just like children. You know, parents are supposed to be responsible and accountable for their children. Def Jam was accountable for LL, Run DMC, Beastie Boys, and so many others. Motown was responsible for their children. The Temptations, Four Tops, um, um, the, the Vandellas, Supremes. It was, it was responsible for them. And it showed in their character, in their image, in their stage presentation, in the way they spoke, in every aspect. But record labels today don't care. They don't care. So, so, uh, okay. So, what I'm seeing is there's a split. There's like a there's like a, a ocean <laughs> between between the indie artist and the artist that has made it, where they can hire someone for their outfits, for their their uh, their image, you know, for their uh, publicity, things like that. But when you're an indie artist, that is that is gone. It's like like you said, just Go ahead, wherever, whatever you want to wear. But, you know, you have the bigger artists that understand the value and understand the image and they hire people to do that for them now. So has it transferred over to I need to do this for myself now? Well, I mean, that's, that's the whole thing that when you when you say you're independent. When you're independent, that means, OK, I need. I'm doing I'm doing this by myself, but that doesn't mean that you can do whatever you want to, however you want to, because it, and it, and it, it always it always baffles me. Like, for real, it always baffles me that independent artists or young artists, this, that and other, they do things, say things, dress a certain way. And then with this social media age, they get so much backlash for what they said. And, or how they look, they want to get mad. Hmm. They don't add up. How are you going to get mad at something that you did yourself? You get what I'm saying? So yeah. you have to take more responsibility for self. And the, the thing about young artists today is that a lot of them don't, they don't research the business. They feel like they can just jump in. Somebody told, hey, hey, mama, grandma, Peanut, Junebug, 
Auntie George around the corner, Medea, everybody told them, hey, your song is hot. <laughs> your song is hot. So they get this puffed up egotistical thing about them that, okay, I'm hot now. I can do this, that, and the other without studying the business and then get discouraged when things don't happen the way they plan. Because this music, this music industry is not for the weak of heart. It is not for the weak. This industry is full of manipulators and vultures. Mm. It, it's, and if you don't know how to navigate, you will get eaten up. Period. So you have to know how to navigate. And they don't they don't they don't study or research the actual business. That's a, there's a reason why the music business is called the business of music. It's a business. Yeah. Yeah, it Period. Is. Definitely. Period. Is. Yeah. Definitely. So, is. so, 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 in order, to, in order to properly get A and R, you have to hire someone that knows artist development. I mean, if you if you're looking for proper artist development, you have to hire someone that knows true, real artist development, not someone that says they know artist development because a lot of people say a lot of things but don't mean what the hell they say don't know they just heard about it and might have looked it up on the computer or looked up you know looked up on social media or, you know but they don't know they haven't experienced jack come on man you know they, they haven't experienced jack they haven't gone through it hey I watched because I ear hustle, you know, like I say, when I was on, on, the, on, on tour with the Fresh Fest, I, I, I ear hustle the business, literally ear hustle the business from Uncle Russ, Russell Simmons, Rick Rubin, Ricky Walker, and so many countless others when they was talking. I was that kid. I was that quiet kid that stayed close, but kept quiet because I wanted to hear what they was talking about. So I ear hustled this business from them. And and I heard a lot of things mm. and was witness and privy to a lot of things that made me say, oh, that's what's going on when I see artists do and say certain things. So you have to understand the business. This is not this is not this business is not for the weak. It, it is not. It definitely isn't. It definitely isn't. So running a successful record label today. What do you uh -huh. suggest since the model has changed so much since a lot of the things that used to be in the hands of the record labels is now in the hands of the artists themselves being the indie artist. And, and you know, and, and it, it's so hard to find the people that you need nowadays. What 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 is it that we need to be doing? What is it that we need to be doing? Well, um, there's some simple steps. I mean, because although the. Although the the model has changed, although the model has changed, the the blueprint, the foundation, is still the same. It might be slightly modified, but it's still the same, yah yah. Mm -hmm. And you know, you have to you have to learn to to flow with that. But you have to be conscious enough to see it. But if you just if you just decide, oh, I'm gonna start a record label. <laughs> hey, hold on. Hey, like so many, like so many do. Oh, I think I'm gonna start a record label. You know, and just and just jump in, find somebody that they that they think can rap. Somebody that they think sounds good. I'm gonna start a record label. But okay, but that's why most of them fail. Or that's why most of them don't have any respect or credibility in the industry because they don't know what they're doing. They're just moving all around, just like a just like just like a newborn baby, just like a baby, just all over the place, just making noise, wah, 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 and getting nowhere, just flipping and flopping all over the place. You have to know this business in order to make strides. And I've always had some points. And I actually got the points from, from 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 Uncle Russ, Russell Simmons, and how to start and run a successful record label. I have I have the points. Do you want to hear the points? I definitely want to hear the points. Yes. 
Okay. okay. Yeah. And, all right. the, the first thing for, for all them, you know, for, for all the for all the up and comers that are listening, for all the up and comers that are listening, for anybody that's interested in running a record label, it's simple. It's simple, but complex at the same time. Period. First off, first off, in running in, in running a label, you need a name. Okay, you need a name. Let's get the name together, but it has to be. You can't. You can't just say, "Well, okay, I'm gonna name it." Hey, I'm gonna name it Ramen Noodle Record Label. Nobody care about that. You have. It has to be a name that's gonna appeal. That's gonna. That's gonna. It, it either needs to appeal or shock. Appeal or shock. For instance, back in the eighties. Having a record label called Def Jam appealed. Why? Because back in the 80s, that was our lingo. That was our, you know, that was our slang. Man, you funky fresh, bro. You deaf. You this that. So that was that appealed to us. So having a record label called Def Jam was right on time. Oh, yeah. Having a record label called having a record label called Brick Squad. Having a record label called Brick Squad was like, what? What is that? The squad, that's brick. That means that that squad is tight. That means that that squad is untouchable and almighty, invincible, incredible. I, 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 I have a <laughs> gaslight. Gaslight. Oh my gosh. Really? That was you doing? Okay. <laughs> I mean, you know, you see something relevant for today. I mean, that is big time relevant for today. Yeah. And so, and, and so, when you when you say when you say when you after you pick that name for the label, and this is before this is before the all the intricate stuff gets gets implemented. The, the, the my second point that was the first point. Find a name. The second point would be you have to. You have to address your goals. Mm -hmm. What is your goal for the label? What is your goal? Is it and 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 you have to pick this artist, pick certain artists that's going to um attribute or contribute to those goals. If you're a country, it needs to be a country artist. If you want to be a hip hop label, it needs to be that. Is that uh, you can't just be all over the place with your goals. You have to target your goals, hone in on it, boom, and ride with it. Period. You have to you have to address your goals. That's number two. Number three, find your audience. Find your audience. I'm sorry, that's hard. I'm sorry, that's hard. Because that took so much money. And so much time that most people don't even realize how much time that they have to put in to find their audience. It's not hey. your it's numbers, not your neighbors, neighbors okay, 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 I'm talking about your audience. Not your building, a record, building a record label is not, is not like popping popcorn. No, it's not. No, it's not. So yeah, you have to take, you have to, you have to put in, you have to get, do your due diligence. You have to put in your time. You have to do your research. Find it. If it's a hey, hey, if it's eighteen, if it's eighteen to thirty-one or eighteen to twenty-five, okay, then boom. You, wherever you go, you have to you have to go to the go, go to the, the the college radio stations. You know, you have to go to the parties. You have to do this and other. Put in that work. If it's if it's twenty-five or if it's if it's thirty to forty, depend on the genre of music. Then you have to do that. Hell, if it's if it's if it's twelve, if it's twelve to eighteen, once again, depending on the artist. If it's twelve to eighteen, then you have to do some back to school drives. You have to do some 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 you know some some school things for that for that age group. You know, so you have to target your audience. And yes, it's very it's very tedious. It's very tedious, but in order to be successful, you have to put in the work. And that's just it. To be successful, you have to put in the work. 
And the work is not the work. Hey, the, the work is not always rainbows and unicorns, y'all. Yeah, yeah. I'm just saying. <laughs> we know that. Okay, so, 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 what's the next point? Finding your audience, finding your goal, getting that name. What? What's what, next? What's next? Once you get the hey, once you get the name, and everything set up, you have to say okay. Where is this artist? You have to find that artist with the it factor. I'm done. I'm done. Because there's so many yep. different artists out there. Not everybody hey. that thinks they have the it factor has the it factor. But they have a, I'm going to tell you something. It's factor, but they don't have the it factor. Okay? okay. You have to find okay. someone with that it factor. And I always go back. I, re, I refer I refer to my age. Right? I refer to my age. Um, you know, my, my age of music. Okay? There was a reason... There was a reason why Russell signed LL. There was a reason. I'm not even gonna, I'm not even gonna say run DMC because that was a given because you know that, that was his brother. You know, run run, run is, is Russell's brother. So that, that was a given. And he was good. He was real dope. So that was a given. But there was a reason why he signed LL to the label. Because LL had that it factor. Okay. When, when 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 my cousin and I, Quad Master Uno, when we was when we um, got our first record deal with Foresight Records, I believe in the it factor. So what we did, we walked in, we was all nice and mannerable. Hey, how you doing, sir? It's it's a pleasure to meet you. And you know this, that, and the other. And then I mean we had we had the big boom box. When he said, and this is this is a true story. When he said. Okay, show me what y'all got. We turned on the boombox and I jumped on his I jumped on his desk and was in his face. <laughs> and he was like, whoa. He signed us on the spot. Because not only not only was the music, not only was the music dope, and we talking about we talking about Florida music. So if anybody knows about music. You know the Florida music, the Florida music scene at that time. It was about, it was about booty music. It was about women. It was about sunshine. It was about booty. Almost no clothes. Booty. It was about booty. It was about bending over. It was about all the, all the good stuff in life that matters, right? But anyway, right? <laughs> so so, but it wasn't just about the music. He was impressed by our presentation. Once again, I'm gonna go backward. Image is everything. So the fact that I jumped up on the desk, I jumped up on the desk, I kicked all his papers off the desk, and I was just in his face like, what? We great, and we know it. Sign the papers. Give me my check. That was the first record deal. Well, that was the first record well. deal. So that artist with that it factor. and I mean, it's, I mean, it's, it's numerous. You know, Pac, Public Enemy, Big Daddy Kane, um, I can even say, I can even say, I can even say Drake, Lil Wayne. You know, these are ones with the it factor. Something that's different. What's called generational talents that takes that takes the movement takes the movement to another level. That's generational talent. That's what they call it. Mm -hmm. So you know, so you have to find that artist with the it factor. My next point would be managing. Now we getting we getting a little deep here. Managing the labels money. Managing the labels and the artists royalties. We are get we are in the trenches now. Because you can play with me about a lot of things and I play about a lot of things. I don't play about my cheddar. I don't play about that cheese now. I play about a lot of things, you know, but I don't play about I don't play about that bag. Period. So you have to find someone that when you're managing royalties, you have to find someone that 
is credible in managing royalties, in managing money. You have to find someone that when when they when when they when they say the artist is gonna make a certain amount, that artist gets paid a certain amount. I'm gonna read you something, right? The accounting of an artist's royalties can be an intimidating process. But the more you prepare and create a system for yourself, the more successful you will be at accurately keeping records. The most common split of an indie community is 50-50. We're talking about, we're talking about indie, right? Paying an artist in such a way that is that is reliable and transparent is more important than how often you pay them. Having said that, most labels report their royalties quarterly. If an artist is very popular and earning a lot of money, you may want to consider reporting monthly. Pay the artist what they're worth. Don't play with people's money. If you're trying to start a label, don't play with people's money. If you're listening to, the, to, the, to this broadcast, and you want to start a label, don't play with people money. Period. Perfect, perfect example. T L C. Don't play with people money. That's <laughs> just saying. Hey, I got three words. Hey, I got three words for you. T L C. Don't play with people's money out there. I don't, I don't know if they know what happened, but you, know, you guys will have to go back in time and, and, and check that out for yourself. Because that was, that was interesting. That was very interesting. That was very interesting. Very. So, moving on. The next, the next point, and I, and I think that in this day and age, is very important. Right? You need to find a credible, viable, workable, however you want to put it, a, a, a digital distributor. You know, um, if you're talking about digital platforms, if you're talking about um, I, iTunes, Spotify, Tidal, you know, places like places like that, it's easier today. But it, you have to be careful. Because a lot of these digital distributors, they do just that. And a lot of people don't understand that. That, they, that, that these distributors, they, they're actually the gatekeepers. They, they're the gatekeepers of old and mostly gone. But these digital uh, distribution companies have become more, um, you know, democratized. Having said that, you can't upload directly to these, to these um, digital platforms. You need to upload through a digital aggregator like CD Baby, DistroKid, TuneCore. Now, there was a there was a time where I believed in those that I just mentioned, and these are just notes that I made, right? But you have so many more research. You have so many more that you. Don't have to pay for, or and that's going to give you more if you have to pay for. But I, I, I employ you to do your research. And I'm gonna tell everybody this. Tell everybody this, and I don't give out. I don't give out ancient Chinese secrets very often. But if you can get a distribution deal with Empire, Empire right now is leading the charge. Leading the charge because not only is Empire distribution free but you got to work to get on empire not but not only is it free to get on empire but empire works with you they're going to make sure you have distribution not just nationally but if the song is really hot if the song is really hot they're going to push you internationally now for those that don't know the international market is the ultimate market. Why? Because people overseas, when you're talking about Asia, Europe, Africa, they appreciate American music, American artists. No, it doesn't matter what the genre, they appreciate American music much more than people in America. 
Yeah. Make that make yeah. sense. A lot of artists, like especially a lot of old school artists, hell, Josephine Baker, uh, Paul Robeson, hell, even even um even even my dude Lenny Kravitz, you know, and hundreds of other, they they go overseas to Europe. They play concerts and tours in Europe before they'll play a tour and a concert in America because the appreciation, the appreciation is much deeper. It's amazing. Huh? Say it again. It's amazing. it's amazing. If you can get amazing. over there, it get is amazing. It is. It's beautiful. And the love, man, the love, the love is amazing. The love is crazy in Europe, in Europe and Asia. And you would think, you would think, and, and the crazy thing about it, when you go to these different countries, Yes, it's a different country, but you you automatically thinking, okay, well, I'm going over here to play for these people. Um, they know the music, but they don't understand what I'm saying. But when you get on stage and people are singing, back that thing up, back that thing up in the audience, and you got 20,000 people saying that. What in the world is going on? It's crazy. Hell, even in the 50s and the 60s, um, when, 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 when Muddy Waters had his run and the whole chess records family dissolved. Muddy Waters went overseas to London because he had met um, the Rolling Stones. The Rolling Stones had come through the studio. And the matter of fact, they even named they, the Rolling Stones even named their group off of one of Muddy Waters, who is if you don't know who Muddy Waters is. I, I, Muddy Waters, I, 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 Muddy Waters, not not you. I know you. <laughs> I, know, I know you know, right? But for those that don't know, Muddy Waters was one of the 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 greatest blues players of all time. Oh, yeah. So when Muddy Waters, when his when when his career started going down in America. He went to he went to London because the Rolling Stones said, "Hey, we love you." Like I said, the Rolling Stones named their group behind one of Muddy Waters' most popular songs, "Rolling Stone." So they had a lot of honor and appreciation and value for him. So when they realized that, okay, America is not treating you like like you like you're supposed to be treated as an icon. Come on over here. And when he went to London and played Europe, he made so much money. More than he had ever made in America. <laughs> and his legacy was cemented because of that. Yeah. So artists, yeah. so artists, know who you're dealing with. A lot of artists like this, you know, they like Spotify. They like Spotify. They like doing this. And Spotify is good. But Spotify Spotify doesn't get you where you need to be. It's just a distributor. So, last thing, once you get, once you find the right distributor, ladies and gentlemen that want to be in the music business, you need proper pr promo and marketing. Hold on, I'm gonna say it again. Let me rewind. <laughs> Let me rewind. A distribution company does not market or promote your music. Please stop telling people that because that is not true. Please stop telling people that. A distribution company like iTunes and Spotify and all that, they do not market and promote your music. They do exactly what their title says. Distribute. So you need to find a viable, credible marketing and promotion person to help guide you and push you to where you think you're supposed to be. <laughs> to where you think you're supposed to be, or if your song is hot, where you should be. Now, there's a lot of marketing and promotion people out there, and I know a few, like very good people. Um, that can get you where you need to be, but you need to do your research. Register your music. I'm gonna throw this. This is a bonus. This is a bonus. Register your music, y'all. People are always talking about getting paid. They talking about running a record label. They talking about running a record label. I'm gonna run this record label. This that, and the other. But they and they might have two, three, five artists on the label, 
but their music is not registered. You know what that means? That's that's money on the table that they're missing. If you don't register your music, people can play your music anywhere and you don't get paid for it. Mm -hmm. If they play, uh, look, man, look, I'm a realist. I'm a realist. If they play your music, if they play your music in the damn elevator, that's a check. If they play your music in the elevator, that's a check. They play your music in the club. That's a check. They play your music definitely on the radio. That's a check. But if your music is not registered, you get nothing. And you wonder why you broke. You're a record label, but you broke. Because you because you you didn't take care of your artists. You didn't take care of your children. You didn't, you wasn't responsible or accountable for your children. Register your music. Now, people seem to think people seem to think that BMI and ASCAP is registering your music. Stop lying to people. Stop lying. They just keep track of your music. BMI, ASCAP, CSAC, that's not registering your music. If you want to register your music properly, then you need to research that. I'm not going to tell you. You need to research that. Google it. This is the day and age. Registering music. And you'll be surprised how many sites come up to register your music the right way. I, I want I want people to get paid. When I was the hey, I, I want people to get paid. When I was the president of 1017 Brick Squad, when I was hell, yeah, when I was the, when I was a manager before that, when I was the ANR, when I was the president, all I wanted was my people to get paid. And to me, and, and to me, I have I, I'm firm I'm a firm believer that. A little bit of something is a whole lot of nothing. That's copywritten. That's copywritten and patent. You can't use that. Still that whatever, whatever. Whoever listening out here, right? But a little bit of a little bit of something is better than a whole lot of nothing. So if you get a check for fifty dollars, hundred dollars, let's say two hundred, that's two hundred more than your ass had an hour before that. So that means that that means that if you have proper promotion and marketing, that two hundred can blossom into two grand. That two grand can blossom into two into two hundred k. That two hundred k can blossom into five mil if you have someone that's on your team that's gonna look out for you. If not, hey, if not. You'll be you you'll you'll be singing it. You'll be singing and rapping at the local. You know what I'm saying? At the local pub, at the local dive bar, at the local pool hall with June Bu with June Bug, Peanut, and your auntie Susu watching the football game. You know, while everybody while everybody eating on cheeseburgers and curly fries. Come on, man, you gotta do better. <laughs> I'm just saying. If you want to run a record label? Do your research, people. Please. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Take it. Go ahead. I hear you. Yo, I hear you. you I know, hear it, you. And it, that's a lot of information. And that is just the tip of the iceberg. That's just the tip. That's, that's just the tip. That's just the tip. That's just the very tip. That's, that's like that's 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 that. But, but that's the foundation, though. That's the foundation. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Really? Yeah. 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 Wow. Yeah. Yeah, that is a lot to take in. I know a lot of people don't know what you just said because they haven't really comprehended it yet. So if you haven't really comprehended what you said, you need to go back. Uh, the time center in the description box below, so that way you can go down here to find out what it is and what the topics are uh, that Omar Ali had told you about. Let me tell you something. You know, running a successful any kind of business means that you know what you're doing. So just like Omar said, go Google. You're gonna find out that there's a lot more to it than just what he said. But that what he said will get you started, definitely. Omar, what are you doing today? What are you doing today? Well, today I'm just you know since since I resigned, I'm um basically just focusing on 
my, my other businesses. Um, I've been doing a lot of real estate lately. Um, buying up, buying up land, buying property, buying houses, um, keeping some, flipping them, you know, sell, buying, buying low, selling high. It's all about the cheddar. Yeah. Um, yeah. Working on, work, working on my, working on my shoe brand, which is which is called Exquisite. Um, working on setting up some some other some other business. I have some. Some boutiques that myself, um, that myself and my significant, my significant others, my partners, are um, putting together, and we just, just trying to, like I say, just trying to do some things other than the music mm -hmm. for right, for right now, because um, I've been in the music business all my life, um, and I, I needed a break. Like I say, been in the music business since I was six years old, so I felt like I needed a break once my um, once my my newest son was born a few years ago, um, and I, I have to I have to say I'm at, I'm I'm more at peace and I'm happier than I've ever been in my life without the music in my ears. Now, 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 is it still calling me? Of course, because it's in my blood. I was born I was born I was born great into greatness, so the music is in my blood, and it always will be. But I felt I needed a break. But like I said earlier, I'm looking to get back into um, the music, the, the, the music business. I'm music interested. I'm trying to get back. I want to get back. Yes, it's calling me, but I will not go back unless it's the right situation. Like I've had, I've had some 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 upstart record labels um, hit me up. I've had some recognized historical legendary. Record labels hit me up, but the situation just wasn't right. They wanted me to come back, and I mean, I'm I'm cool. I, you know, I don't want, I don't necessarily have to come back to a record label as a president, because that's not me. I love the trenches. I'll come back as a as as an executive A and R if I if 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 the situation was right, because I simply love this business. I love working with artists in the trenches, but the situation would have to be right. But I was just I was just speaking about speaking to someone the other day about this that. If I got back into the business as a manager, that artist would have to have that that total it factor that I was speaking about earlier. I would have to I would have to see this artist and want to get naked for this artist for this artist to be successful. Like, what do you want me to do? You, you want me to strip? What do you want me to do? How much How much is gonna take? I mean, hell, I, hell, I'm gonna, I get on the phone right now. Okay, you need me to call Interscope. You need me to call Def Jam. You need me to call this. You need me to call that. What? I, I call my sister. My sister is one of the most powerful women in the business. Tell me what you want me to do. I need that kind of artist. Yeah, that art, that that artist that I go, I go in my bank account. If that if that artist is struggling, that artist is struggling with rent, car note, needs some new shoes. Hair did, hair done. What they say, hair did, hair done. <laughs> you know, whatever. What you need? I need that kind of artist that I go, I go, I go, I go in my safe at the house, my safe, and, and make sure this artist has what he or she needs. I need that type of artist. Yeah, that's the only yeah. reason. That's the only way I'm coming back. Yeah, you know, into the into, into the industry as a manager. I'm just yeah. saying. <laughs> Yeah, you know, yeah. a lot of people you know, don't realize how much work it takes to be that artist. artist. They think they Ooh, are, but they're they really are. not. And they take because Zuma, because Zuma, Zuma and Peanut told them they was hot. But they're not. And, and you know, that's where A and R comes in. That's also where artist development comes in, and they just don't understand. Well, I'm, I'm gonna tell you. I'm gonna tell you something. A, a lot of this, 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 this generation is a is what is what I call a microwave generation. Mm -hmm. Because they've seen other artists have microwave success, but it wasn't really microwave success. Thank you. It Thank looked you. that way. Thank it you. looked that Thank way. You. Like for instance, I'm gonna give, I'm gonna give you an example. Justin Bieber. They, people think that because Justin Bieber was young, 
that he had microwave success. He didn't. He was on YouTube, but he was that little boy was grinding. His parents had him grinding. Grinding. It just looked like overnight success because, because the powers that be found him and boom, made him a star overnight. But he didn't, but he didn't become a star overnight because he was grinding years before that, even at a young age. Wow. Lady God, wow. people think she had microwave success because Vince found her on YouTube and boom. Made her made her an overnight success, but she was grinding for years. I'm talking about, I'm talking about, and people was booing her. People was booing her, talking about her on 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 YouTube. I'm talking about bad comments, not the good stuff. Hmm. Um, and more and, and more notably, Drake. Yeah, yeah. You know, Drake, Drake, Drake like to say he like to say, yeah. Um, um. I did it with I did it without I did it without this that and the other. I didn't have any help. But that's just that's just for the public. That's just for the public. But if you know about Drake, you know that hell, he was on Nickelodeon before that. He was already grinding. Mm -hmm. he, he was on YouTube. He was on YouTube grinding before Lil before Lil Wayne snatched him up. Mm -hmm. He didn't have overnight success. It just seemed like it because he had already done his work. Period. Yeah. Yeah. He had already put in his work. He had already made the right connections. He had the, 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 the orbit and the universe, the stars, the quasars, the moon, the whole stratosphere. Yeah, that had already been lined up for him. Already. He, he had already he been aligned yeah. for him. Yeah. So that when he so that by the time he got with Cash money and young money, boom! He hit the ground running and never looked back. Mm -hmm. But it wasn't popcorn success. It wasn't microwave success. Nope. He had already done nope. the work. But, but but a lot of artists don't see that. They don't. They don't know that. They don't know the research. They just know what he says in his music, and they just you know they they just know you know they know what they don't know. Yeah. But yeah. but but so they so they look at that and they think that they can imitate that because 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 you know because the the, the old man the old man at the Piggly Wiggly said said that that song sounded good to him you, <laughs> you know because hey hey because mama because mama's auntie cousin that does that does sister Sarah's hair said ooh can can I get a copy of that song to play to play in my car. Come on, man! It don't work like that. So they run. So they run with that without doing the work, without putting in the work. Yeah. If you're trying to yeah. start, if you're trying to start a record label, people. If you want a successful record label, put in the work, please. Put in the work. That's the only way it's going to work. If you put in the work. I wish everyone. I wish everyone success. I want to see every. Hey, I'm the type of person. I want to see everyone win because there's enough money out here for everybody to get some. But if you don't put in the work, if you don't, if you don't put in the work and it doesn't turn out right, I don't want to hear that boo hoo that that boo hoo oh whoa me crap about it didn't work. You didn't put in the work. If it didn't work, you didn't put in the work. Period. That's right. That's right. Period. That's right. Wow. Well, Omar, so that's why, that's why I'm thankful for platforms like, 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 like what you have. I'm thankful for, for platforms like you and people like you and what you have and what you're doing, what you're been, have, what you've been doing for years to give people a platform to share their knowledge, their wisdom, and to, to, to assist other people to move forward. If they take it, if they take it, it's all good and they can move forward. If they don't take it, it's nobody's fault but their own. That's right. That's and, right. You know, and, you know, and like you said, right. these platforms here, platform uh, here, like mine, uh, like mine shoot, I got here, I got here. The beginning of uh, uh, podcast. Uh, and we, you know, moved on, moved on to the bigger the things bigger like Roku, Amazon, Amazon Fire, Fire, Comcast. Comcast. Um, um, you know, so I'm behind right. you know, more than I am in the front. But right. you're right. But a lot of people don't see the work that you the do behind the scenes, the work that you have done all along. 
they don't realize right. they don't that realize you've been here years. years. Yeah. Right. They don't see the word. Finding. They don't oh. see the word. Oh, Ooh, that's crazy. They don't see the word. They don't see the word. Look at Bruno Mars. Bruno Mars has been out way before his very first song that he ever knows. Right. What was it? Uh, so okay. no one to do anything. I just want to be in bed. That's song. That was not yeah. his first song. That was not. Literally speaking, that song took a year before it even broke into the major. Exactly. It was out a year. I think almost two years. If I'm not mistaken, they were shopping. It was shopping. They were shopping that song. Come on. Yeah. Come on. Yeah, and see, a lot, a lot of people don't know. A lot of people don't know before, before Bruno Mars got his, got his record deal with, um, when he got his record deal with, with, with his label that he's with now. Um, Jermaine Dupri of So So Death actually turned down Bruno Mars because Bruno, Bruno, Bruno wanted to be with So So Death because he, because he, he's a fan of So So Death and all the artists that was on there. He's a fan of Jermaine. And Jermaine said, "No, nah, man, no, nah, man." And, and and then and then look, look what happened. Yep. But everything happened for a reason, though. Many years. Huh? I remember him doing a documentary where he was homeless with his father for many years, and he took you back to the place where he was living. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, a lot of people don't realize, man. You know, it doesn't matter what you have; it's really going that matters. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, look, man. Anything, anything can happen in the blink of an eye. Mm -hmm. But you just have to be prepared. And I, I tell people this all the time: whether it's, whether it's artists, whether it's other labels, whether it's managers, hell, my own kids. I tell them. I tell people all the time: if you stay ready, you don't have to get ready. If you stay ready, you don't have to get ready. That success, success is when success is when time, when, when preparation and opportunity come together. That's what success is. When preparation and opportunity come together. That is the meaning of success. If you stay ready, you don't have to get ready. There you go. Well, I think that's if somebody called me right well, now. Go ahead. Because I'm because although yeah. go ahead, I, go ahead, go ahead. I said I think that's a good. I, I think that's a great way to put it. Great way. Like 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 like. Okay, so a lot of people aren't ready to begin with. I mean, think they are, but they haven't done. They haven't dotted their eyes and crossed their teeth. Right. You know. Got it. Yeah. Be ready. Yep. Yeah, never know oh, who you're gonna well, meet. Who you, you don't know. You never know who you're gonna meet. I have people. I'm gonna show you. I'm gonna show you something. Show you something. And this is this is the, the egotistical side of of not just artists, but especially young artists. I have people that have come to me. Will you listen to my music, please? Listen to my music, okay? And they'll tell me, yeah, um, my music. Has been on this this radio station, that radio station. Um, I've done this show, that show. They'll tell me this, that, and the other as they want me to listen to their music. Because they want me to critique their music. Hey, I want you to listen to this. Tell me what you think. Now, hold on. Hold on. Hold on now. Hold on now. When you say that to me, I want you to tell me what you think. Then you have to be good for the good, the bad, and the ugly. Because... I come from an era. I come from an era where music is music. It's real music. It's not. It's, it's, it's none of this. Uh, it's none of this. Pop up shop. A hey, pop up shop. I do and say what I want to. Music. You you need to be, you need to have something. You need to have something in that music. And they'll they'll they'll, they'll give me that music, and then I'll send them back some red lines. <laughs> <laughs> I'll send them back some red lines in that email. This done, this done, I make an asterisk. Okay, you need to work on this, that, and the other. And matter of fact, ma matter of fact, who did your recording? Your recording is trash. Whoever that engineer is, you need to find someone else. Where'd you get that beat from? 
this, that, and the other, and I'll break down everything for them. Ooh, flatline. I won't hear from them ever again. <laughs> yeah, I think that's the main reason why a lot of artists um, haven't put out any music, or they take such a long time to put out their music because they're looking for that thing. They're looking for the right sound, the right music, the right everything. And right, of course. I, and I, I know exactly what you mean. You have to feel it. Yeah. Yeah. You have to feel it. If you if you if you're a true artist, if you're a true artist, you'll know you'll know the song or the music or the beat when you when you feel it. Not when you hear it, but when you feel it. You know, the most the most amazing thing to me was the most thing amazing thing to me was um I was in I was in New York on business and I got invited to to go to go to the studio um where where Jay-Z was recording. Jay-Z Jay-Z Pharrell, they had just signed Kanye and I'll never forget it. I'm in the studio and Jay was like I'm talking about oh my gosh, it was so many producers in there. They were just they were just feeding him beats and he was like Okay, next. Okay. I like that. Next. But then every time a beat came on that he was really feeling it, he you see that you see that neck. He like, whoo, and that face. You know it. You gotta you gotta do the face, y'all, y'all. Yeah, yeah, you gotta do the face. When you feel it, you gotta do the face. You like you like, oh wait, yeah. <laughs> You get what I'm saying, and it makes hey, it makes you want to move, and then your yeah, your mind start clicking. It don't it don't just resonate in your soul. Your mind start clicking because you can hear you can hear that song coming out. You can hear that you can hear that you can hear you know you putting the putting that verse down. You like um sha da 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 ooh da 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 you can hear it. You riding. It's a wave. You, there's a wave. You can feel it. But I think that artists today, they just, they get a beat. They be like, oh, okay, I like that beat right there. Okay, let me put something to it. Boop! Let me put it out. You can't be pop. You can't be a microwave popcorn artist, man. Can't do it. And have, long, do it. have longevity. But think about it. Think about it. In the last, in the last, I'd say five, ten years, think about the artists that have come up in the hip hop genre, young artists that had that the record that the record labels pushed, record labels pushed the big boys, pushed them into success. You don't hear about them now. You don't hear about them now. Why? Because the record label pushed them to make money off of them. This is a business, people. The record label pushed them to make money off of them. And then discarded them once that record label, once that once that record sales went down, and they didn't come up with another hit, or you see another, another what what the quote said, another hit. <laughs> the record label discarded them. Yeah. So so hey, microwave, hey, think about it. Microwave popcorn gets stale very fast. Look, look at it that way. Microwave popcorn gets really stale. So if you look at if you look at microwave popcorn compared to cooking cooking a nice cooking a nice ribeye or porterhouse steak with onions, mushrooms, a little red wine, you know, you getting that sauce together. Microwave popcorn, ribeye steak. There's no comparison. <laughs> Where my steak at? So that's not the difference in the long in the longevity. Yeah, you, you know, yeah, right. So I believe in pushing artists to longevity. I believe in if I if I if an artist comes to me, I'm already thinking, okay, if this is what you want to do, this is what you have to do. If you want longevity, any artist that I work with, whether it was whether I was managing or when I was with Ten Seventeen Brick Squad. I wanted them to have longevity. I wanted people to be talking about them long after they've decided to 
resign or retire or fall back or or, or whatever. I wanted the music to, to 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 last and to resonate. Hell, to this day, to this day, people still talk about Gucci. People still talk about Marker. People still hell. About two weeks, about two weeks ago, about two weeks ago, I was at the red light. I was at the red light, and and these these females jumped out the car. They were listening to Soldier Boy, and jumped out the car. Now that song ain't been out in fifteen years. They they jumped out the car and was doing hey, hey and was doing the Soldier Boy. We talking about fifteen years because why? Because they was that that was resonating with them. Soldier Boy, hey Soldier Boy made his mark. Period. Gucci Walker made 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 their mark, so that's what I believe in. I believe in longevity, leaving a legacy, leaving a legacy in every in, in, in everything that I do. To be honest, everything that I do, everything that I've done in the music in the music business with artists, with myself, with my own music, I do it to build a legacy. Because I don't want I don't want to be gone from this. I don't want to be gone off this rock. And people just say, man, you know what? He was nice. He was nice. He was a good person. Hell no. That's too simple. And I've never been a simple kind of person. I want them to be like, man, let me tell you something. Omar or, you know, Omar or Outlaw. Well, he was the shit. Well, hey, I remember he came out with this song. I remember he I remember he was working with Queen Sheba and he was he was managing Queen Sheba. And, 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 and she and she hell, Queen Sheba is a legend. I remember he when he was with 1017 Brick Squad and he was doing this and this, that, and the other. I, I want someone to have something substantial to say about me when I'm gone. Yeah. That's yeah. that's building that legacy. Yeah. I want people to be able to look back, get on YouTube, get on whatever, whatever. I want people to be able to look back and see this interview and be like, man, boy, boy, Omar, o o Omar was dropping gems, boy. Omar had something to say. He looked crazy, but he had something to say. <laughs> I'm just saying. Omar, thank Omar, you so much for being on the show. You, you did drop a lot of gems. I think a lot of people have a lot of things to think about. Just don't jump into having a record label or doing these things without taking the necessary steps. And these are some of the necessary steps. I am sure that if you go to the Instagram that's in the corner, we do have a QR code. I'm going to have a link in the description box below so that you can go ahead and follow Omar and pick out his steps and what he's doing today. Omar, thank you so much for being on the show for taking the time out of the day. I appreciate you so much. Look, I appreciate you. The vibe, hey, the vibe is awesome. And you know, when you when you have that when you have that chemistry and that connection, it's nothing but it's not it's nothing but love. It's nothing but love. And I appreciate you. I appreciate you, Queen. Well, thank you so much. I do. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Don't forget to follow Omar on his Instagram page. He also has a Facebook and you can get to that. And he does have his own shoe brand. So, you know, I'm sure that's the thing I haven't seen it. But knowing Omar, it is crazy. I know it is. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Don't forget to dare to be different. Until next time, guys. Bye. Squad up. Thank you.